212, you know how we do. It's your boy BQ. This is the B Side Podcast. Welcome. Not, actually, you know what? Not just welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening, whether you're clicking for the very first time and, and checking me out. If you have been riding with me from day one with the King of the Mountain podcast days, or if you've been listening for a year, two years, whatever, just thank you for being here. Um, I try to do really good things with, with the podcasting, uh, with the YouTubing. And I'm not the best in the world. I'm not the best in the world at what I do, but I um, I do my best for you guys, and I do my best for Impact Wrestling. And with the time that I have allowed to do this, I I do my best for you guys. So thank you so much for writing with me. When I first started, or when I brought back the B Side Podcast, it's always been something I've flirted with. Um, I wanted it to be a weekly venture for me, and hasn't really gotten to that point. It's been kind of bi-weekly, maybe not even bi-weekly, but twice a month, you know, might be two weeks I do it and two weeks I don't, or it's been one, once a month. And I hope to get to that point where it's a weekly thing that I bring to you. So with that, with that going forward, um, there's, there's some changes I'm going to be making on the podcasting side of the house. If you check the last YouTube video upload, which was eight impact wrestling stars that WWE would ruin, you may have heard this at the end of the video. Now, if you haven't checked that out yet and you're listening on YouTube right now in the pinned comment of this, I've got that link there, eight impact wrestling stars that WWE would ruin. So you definitely want to check that out. I've got a part two coming very soon. But an announcement I wanted to make about the Impact Lounge podcasting side of the house going forward in 2020 is that there, I, I'm I'm ramping it up, um, bringing you more podcasts, but it's not going to be an overkill because chances are a lot of you listen to a lot of different podcasts. Some of you may listen to um, or you may watch different wrestling companies, not just Impact. So, you, you know, you probably got a lot of content you're consuming uh, when it comes to streaming audio. So I definitely don't want to shove anything down anybody's throat but going forward uh wherever you listen to the podcast whether it's you know it could be podbean it could be um google or apple podcast wh- wherever you listen um you've probably just used to hearing the total non-stop impact podcast the b-side podcast so going forward we're going to be adding a couple more and they're not going to necessarily be weekly podcasts either so we're not just going to keep shoving stuff at you and say hey listen to all this stuff you know but but i would do want to diversify what we bring you so so for those of you who just love impact wrestling and just just want more want to want to get more well we're going to give you more so there's going to be the uh, shooting up north podcast with lewis carlin he's uh he's going to you know give his thoughts on impact of course uh but he's going to be doing some interviews here and there what i would like for him you know to, to focus on is is conducting interviews with some of the stars that we are seeing on tw- twitch and impact plus you know that we're being introduced to not so much uh, the people already on the Impact Wrestling roster, but some of the people we're being introduced to. But he does have an interview, his first interview, because this is all going to kick off in 2020. So make sure you're subscribing. Just look up the Impact Lounge wherever you s- stream your podcast. All right. Um, so it's going to kick off in 2020, but he's going to kick it off with an interview with Josh Alexander. So that should be really, really good. I've, I've got a couple interviews coming up to uh, Dave Christ. And uh, Adam Thornstow from Reno Scum. He was on a couple years ago, uh, but he would he'd like to hop back on again. And then uh, my man Terrace Williams got the Talking Bout podcast coming up. And uh, I'm as as we get closer, I'm going to get a li- little more into what he's going to be doing. But um, his podcast is going to be really good, really entertaining. It's going to be Impact Wrestling focused, but. At the end of the show, he's going to get into some other wrestling news from other companies and, you know, maybe little reviews here and there about other stuff. So some of you guys who do li- who do watch, you know, uh, WWE or AW or Ring of Honor, whatever, you know, like he's going to bring you a little bit more than just Impact. But it'll, you know, it'll kick off mainly talking about Impact and all that good shit. So uh, and we, we may add a couple more here and there later you know we'll see i just don't want to shove too much at you but i do want to give you guys more and more options and and all that because that's what the impact lounge is about you should just kind of be me and i'm trying to grow this thing and and touch more people touch more lives and do good things for the company 
I've been podcasting less. You know, obviously I got away from doing the weekly review, you know, a year and a half or so ago. Because when I first started the Impact Lounge, it was that really positive home for the Impact Wrestling fan, you know? It was TNA, you know, Dixie was there, Billy Corgan was there. And, you know, back in 2015, 2016, you know, I, I thought they, they were doing good things that weren't getting the credit for. So I wanted to, to be that voice. Now, as time has passed, I've been more critical um, because as the company has has made improvements in certain areas and got bigger in certain areas and had other opportunities, I've expected more from them. So with that comes more criticism than in the past where I'm just kind of like, hey, this is really good and this and this. Now, now I've become, I've become a little bit more of a critic, so I've tried to back down from 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 doing that weekly review and that style of podcasting so much to where, you know, with the B side, this is a platform where I, you know, I'm not just talking about the show, but I'm talking about other things, but I, I think I can get away with being a little bit more critical, but I also understand that I have to praise what's good as well. And I know on my Twitter feed, you know, just oftentimes I kind of comment when I'm negative on something and I definitely don't mean for it to be mainly negative, but you know, you just got to understand as someone who's trying to do positive things for the company, like I want to see better in some areas. I expect more. I don't expect Impact Plus to, when we're watching a show, there to be technical difficulties. Like that's not okay anymore. You know what I mean? Like we've been watching these shows for about a year now, year and a half, maybe, maybe even two years. I don't, I don't even know, but I know Twitch has been a couple of years, but that's not okay anymore. You know, when this show came on last week and there's oh due to technical difficulties you can watch it on fight tv and you know we'll have it up like that's not okay you know what i mean so i'm gonna be critical about shit like that but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna point out what's good too and well i'm gonna transition into something that i think is is good even though i'm gonna have my comments about it my side comments but and that's the rich swan push right now that's going on so uh but to wrap up what i just said make sure you know if you're listening on youtube right now and you're looking for more podcasts to consume, you know, just look up the Impact Lounge where you stream and, and you're going to have new options here pretty soon. You're going to hear from Impact Wrestling stars, Impact, you know, stars who are on Impact, uh, whether it's a weekly show, they're not, you know, part of the roster yet. Maybe the, the Alexia Nicoles, you know what I'm saying? Um, and people we see on Twitch and and uh, uh, Impact Plus, you know, the El Reversos and all that. So we're going to we're going to bring that to you and then we're going to diversify things a little bit, too. Um, in case you do watch other shows, you watch the NWAs or whatever, you know what I mean? So, um, so look forward to that. Uh, Rich Swan, I know that was kind of a long, um, long opening sequence there, but let's get, let's get into Rich Swan and this push that's, that's going on. You know, Rich Swan, I haven't been able to podcast since the, um, the six way elimination and that match with that series of matches was great. I, I was totally locked in to what they were doing and Rich Swan, like he, he has arrived, you know? He took the next step in his impact wrestling career, in his wrestling career. He took the next step as a performer in that match. Just, you know, the performances he was putting on, the selling, the moves, the, uh, you know, just everything about him. He took the next step there. He took that, like, I'm up there in the main event status and it was cool and no surrender they gave him the title match we all knew they were, he was gonna lose because they made the tessa and sammy announcement already and then even last week you know they kind of talked about him getting the title match but he's like oh but best believe we're hard for hard to kill we're coming for those tag team championships like he was letting us know he lost that match as well because he wasn't like hey i'm going to uh, hard to kill to to win the tag team titles and defend the world title you know he didn't say nothing like that so we all knew he was going to lose. So you wish things could be done a little bit better so we could actually have some kind of hope like he was going to beat Sammy Callahan. Uh, but obviously that didn't happen. We knew it wasn't going to happen. But he's taking the next step as a performer. And I guess the negative thing I have is that... So this this episode of Impact that aired last night wasn't good. Let's just Let's just get that out there. I really wanted a podcast last week because that episode was good. You know, the one with Eddie and Elgin and Cage and then um, Reno Scum and and uh, Ace Austin when they took on the Rascals. Like, th- that was good. That was a good episode. This New York venue, don't 
care for it. Um, it looks bad on TV. There's no one in the crowd. The crowd's quiet. Now, I know it's not just the crowd um, because there's there's times you do see the crowd very in, in, uh, engaged and involved. But it's, I mean, how much we, how many times are we going to talk about the audience, the audience levels and the music levels and everything being compressed so that we can hear Josh Matthews and Don Callis clearly? Um, they just have to do something about those sound levels. It's it's bananas uh, that they just just keep allowing that because the arena sounds so dead on television and. Even in the dead impact zone, it wasn't that quiet if you were there in person, you know, but just, just impact is, they don't care about that. Apparently. I don't know. Like, I feel like I can have an, uh, an opinion on this because I do have experience with audio engineering and sound levels and EQ and compression. And, you know, I have, I have experience in this. So I know that it doesn't have to sound like that. You know what I mean? So God, hopefully they improve this going forward, but what I found just negative about last night, because the one match that I was like, okay, what's good, what's going to be good is this tag match. And it was, but when they had R- Willie's, um, Willie Mack get hurt, like, first of all, it wasn't well done. But when he got hurt, you knew exactly what was coming at that. Oh, my God, Rich Swan is going to, he ran the gauntlet last time, so this time he's going to wrestle all these teams by himself and win the match. Um, and that's exactly what happened. I thought it was really unnecessary, but to rewind a little bit, when he had this great performance a couple weeks ago, and then all of a sudden he was like, okay, well, he's going to be in a multi-team tag team match. Yeah. My first thing was like, wow, he's going from that to this. So, so I said to myself, well, you know, he needs to, he still has to leave this match as a standout. You know, he still has to be the guy in this match. It still has to be the guy in this match, win or lose. Now I knew they were going to win. But it just made too much sense, especially with the role he's on. You know, like, of course, he's going to go challenge for a title. But I, I didn't think this was the way to do it. You know, go out there and win by yourself. That, yeah, it was a fluky roll up. And Dave Chris got pinned, which always drives me nuts because I I think he's just so much better than how they make him look on TV sometimes. But um, I thought it was really unnecessary the way they did it. This being said, he's going to be in a ma- big match at Hard to Kill. This was the match I wanted at Bound for Glory. The North versus Swan and Mac. You may you may agree or disagree with me on this. I think they're building towards a uh, Willie Mac turn on Rich Swan. I think there's going to be like a jealousy. Because, they, you know, if you think about how long Mac has been with the company, he's done really excellent work as far as his in-ring work but they haven't been able to get him into like a meaning meaningful feud and i know at homecoming last year he took on sammy callahan but that wasn't a meaningful feud to me that was just kind of like a match they we got to get these two guys on the pay-per-view so let's let's throw them into something and there was a time when uh rich swan was toward the end of his x division title run i actually thought mac was going to turn on him then and challenge for the title so I think this is the narrative I'm going to push up to hard to kill. I don't think they're going to win the tag team titles. I think, uh, you know, Mac is going to turn on him, which is going to be redundant because RVD turned on Rhino last pay-per-view a bound for glory. And it was the tag team title match, you know, so maybe there's some redundancy in that, but I think that's where it's going. Uh, you know, we'll see my, my, my opinion may change on that, but that's really where I think it's going. As far as the hard to kill build, like obviously, if you've been you know listening to me for, <laughs> for even a few weeks, you know I hated the Bound for Glory build, and I I truly think it was one of the worst Impact built. I'm not gonna say in wrestling, but Impact built pay per views in, in a long time. Hard to kill though, I can get behind this build, and I'll tell you why because the first thing that they did to establish this pay-per-view we're going to establish the headliner and we're going to establish all the title matches we're going to establish the big matches first and get you get you pumped and ready for those so i don't remember what the first match they announced for bound for glory was it might have been cage and callahan but when when callahan became the number one contender 
they pussyfooted a while because they kept they just had to have Tessa and Sammy going at it week after week. You know, like they pussyfooted around to where I was like, whoa, are we going to talk about Sammy being the number one contender anytime soon? And then, you know, they did a good job with that. When, when ultimately, you know what I mean? But the second match they announced was Moose and Shamrock. That might have been the first match. I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking at least the top three here. Moose and Shamrock, which that storyline was was pretty good, but it was probably the worst match at Bound for Glory. It was the worst match. And then the third match they announced was the Rascals against Team AAA, where there's like there's mystery partners. Like We started off like, what the? What the fuck is going on here? You know what I mean? It started off so random, and then it was, you know, Marafuji after that, and it was like, oh my god, I mean, which I love Marafuji, but I'm just saying, like, there was just no build towards anything, and then that Rascals match wasn't even on the main card. So that's the crazy, ah, oh god, awful. But you look at Hard to Kill, and they were like, okay, let's establish the, the title matches early. So we knew... We were getting Sammy and Tess, and we probably knew too early on that. They, I mean, they they spoiled that weeks ahead, and you know, I, I can see why from a promotional standpoint, but it, it still was just odd because we didn't get to, you know, we knew this big multi elimination match was coming, and then we, we already knew who was going to win, and then we knew Rich Swan had a title match coming, and we knew so at this point we know he's going to lose, you know, so it was it was really. Just the timing was really weird on everything. But then we know very shortly after that Ace Austin is going to defend against Trey. And I think the storyline with the mom is really good. I was really happy they're doing this at the pay-per-view because I think the mom storyline is intriguing. I didn't want it to just um, just happen on Impact for a few weeks and then they got to throw together. Because this is what happened with Bound for Glory is that you were building something really meaningful with Rhino and Elgin. You were building something meaningful, meaningful with Ace and Eddie. It was like you're building something, which it felt like they were building something meaningful with Rosemary and Taya. So you see the, all these like stories going in a certain direction, and the blowoffs happen on Impact, and then at the pay per view they get super random opponents who where there's no heat or story or anything, you know. So I'm I'm really glad that they're dragging out the Trey and the Trey's mom thing up to the pay-per-view. And that's awesome because Trey's a tag team wrestler and he's getting an X division title shot. And this is great for Ace Austin's character too. And then Taya, we know she's going to defend against. I haven't enjoyed the build for this. I am not a fan of champions taking non-title losses ever. And we had Jordan Grace pin Taya. We've had ODB pin Taya. I mean... I think Ty is dropping the title at the pay-per-view this time. But, and then maybe she might be done with the company after that. But it's like, damn, you're going to have her, if if she does drop the title, like, damn, she dropped, and she dropped two non-title matches leading up to it, you know? It's hard to, Ty has beat everybody, so it's hard to be like, well, who's going to win this title from her ultimately? It's it's most likely going to be Jordan Grace. So, I think she's going to, she's going to win that, but, Taya has been really, really good television, and she keeps getting better and better and better. And you know, my gut tells me that we're seeing the end of Taya and Impact because she's been around for a while. And then when you have the title that long, like, what's your goal after it? You know, when they were saying the other day that ODB was a four-time Knockouts champion, I was like, dude, are we ever going to see another four-time Knockouts champion? Because they're either out of the company or. You know, even someone with Ali was around for a while. You know, Ali was a still two time holder. You know, Rosemary's still just a one time after all. She's no one's been around longer than her in the knockouts division. So I, I'm, I'm like, damn, are we ever going to see these like multi time, you know, three time, four time champions anymore? It's, I don't, I don't know, but, um, we established a knockouts championship match. And then, you know, we know the tag team championship match now which is North against Swan and Max should have been that way bound for glory, but they wanted to, you know, do the RVD Hill turn. That's cool. And we know we're going to get Elgin versus Eddie. If you didn't see Elgin versus Eddie at unbreakable on impact plus that's the match of the year. If it's mostly like likely not going to win match of the year. So in that case, 
um, I mean, for me, match of the year is Cage versus Elgin because that was a pay-per-view match. I don't think a Impact Plus match should win match of the year, but those two put on a pay-per-view quality match. If you have not seen that, it was amazing. And to think that, that they could take it to the next level would be amazing. And I think Eddie has something to prove because I've talked about this before. I don't think he ever has good pay-per-view matches because he has horrible, you know, he was in the, the call your shot gauntlet. And then, you know, last year bound for glory, he's teaming with Tommy dreamer. And then at slam reversal before that, he took on Tommy dreamer, which is probably the worst match on that card. Um, you know, the match he had with Moose, that was probably pretty good at homecoming, but it's like, to me, he gets involved in the in the least meaningful matches of the pay-per-views, you know? Uh, I haven't really been excited for an Eddie pay-per-view match since he teamed with Alicia and took on uh, Davey and Angelina, you know? So, uh, this, this match is going to bring down the house. We already know that's going to happen. So, they now establish like five matches that have some meaning behind them and you know, we have something to look forward to. We're not like, what the fuck are these matches? They're just throwing at us. So I, I definitely give them props on the hard to kill um, build. Absolutely. Um, a few names were released from WWE this week. And I don't think Luke Harper impact needs him. They need that like star power, that social media following. Um, but I, I think it's very slim chance. He ends up in impact. The Ascension is the one that, uh, and then oh, who's the other one? Sin Cara, like he's not going to come as Sin Cara, so it's pointless to bring him over. Plus, I think he'll go to AAA anyway. The Ascension is a team that that when I watched NXT years ago, I loved the Ascension, and I saw the quick burial they had on television in my waning days of watching WWE. I'm really glad. They are going to get the opportunity to show what they can do because this was the longest reigning, most dominant tag team in NXT history. People don't know that. You wouldn't know that watching that product if you didn't watch NXT back then. Like, they were a joke. I really think Impact could do something with those guys. Now, are they too similar to Reno Scum? I mean, yeah, you probably got to repack. I mean, obviously, you can't use their WWE gimmick. If you watch, like, the early, early days of TNA when they were, like, vampires, I mean... They even have that gimmick, that uh, entrance on YouTube. They had like blue lights, and it was one of the coolest entrances you'll ever see. And then all of a sudden, they got away from that, and then they turned them to trash. But that's a team that I think Impact could do something with. I don't think they fit the AEW tag team style. Like even the big guys there, that tag team division, it's a bunch of flipping and no selling and all that shit. You know, it's exactly what you would expect it to be. I don't think they fit that. So. I'm not even sure Butcher and the Blade fixed that with Brax, Brax and Sutter and his partner. If they fit that, I mean. So we'll see that. We'll see on their upcoming episode. But I really think they could do something in Impact. You know, if they kind of revisit the vampire shit or um, just be taken seriously. But I think they can work. I, I think I, I think that would be a good addition. Now, I saw a, a, a rumor that the, the rumored names on the chopping block next were going to be EC3. Jeff Hardy, Jinder Mahal. Um, there was oh, there was a couple other on there. I didn't really care about them though. Those are the three that that kind of kind of stood out to me that I cared about. Um, I think one of the other names I I saw in there was probably more likely to go AEW or something. But we want EC3 to come home. I don't even think EC3 works in AEW if he's if he's released. I mean. I could see where he's like, hey, I'm going to go there because I wanted to go to a big, you know, big arena company. But he knows what he is in Impact. So we hope he comes home. I think I think we all feel that way. If he were to show up at Slammiversary, you know, trouble, trouble, that hits, and he's shot, pff, the place would come unglued, you know? Um, I, 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 I don't think, I just don't think he fits AEW. And then Jeff Hardy, like, if you're bringing back Rhino and these motherfuckers and Dreamer, like, I'm sure they're going to bring Hardy. They would bring Hardy back. And in the last few years, Jeff was with TNA. He didn't have those substance abuse issues, you know. The easier schedule, being home more. Um, it's probably easier for him to be accountable for himself and for his family to be involved with him. 
Now, I know Matt is kind of teasing leaving online, but we keep seeing, you know, these guys tease leaving and then they just resign, you know, so we'll see what he does. But, you know, Jeff Hardy is obviously a different story. That's some star power they could use. And he had said that he would love another world title run with Impact. And if you remember when him and, and Matt left, like he was the one that agreed to his contract to stay at TNA. Matt was the one who, you know, Matt and Rebby and these motherfuckers, th- th- that's where it got ugly. You know, but Jeff Jeff was, even though he had been the loudest as far as saying he wanted to return to WWE one day, you know, he also said there's a lot I would like to accomplish here as well. I'd love to get another world title run. So, you know, maybe we'll see Jeff back. And then, like, Jinder Mahal's an interesting one because if you didn't know this, he was very close to potentially signing with, with TNA before he went back to WWE. It was one of those things where... WWE got wind that Impact was going to bring someone in, and they threw money at him just to keep him away from from signing. Now, Jinder was really respectful. I believe he was at Slammiversary when I went in 2016, 15. I, I don't know. I, I think he was there, though. It was 16. Him and uh, Laurel Van Ness were in the crowd. And he he had done an interview on Talk as Jericho where he had said that he was in uh, in Orlando while impact was there taping and he was supposed to have an interview with them. And then WWE called and he actually told WWE, well, I already had this sit down with them scheduled. So let me, I want to do the professional thing and, and see that through. And then, you know, we'll go from there. So he did take the meeting and then he obviously went back to WWE. I'm sure that they offered him quite a bit of money and impact, you know, offered him a decent salary or paper appearance, who knows, <laughs> you know, but obviously we're talking money and exposure. Then he went on to win the title, obviously, because they tried to monetize India, which no company has been able to figure that out. But because Vince McMahon is not in touch, he just looked at analytics and like, wow, you know, we got all these views on YouTube from India. Let's, you know, how can we monetize? Like no one's figured out how to monetize India, um, you know, like companies like China to a certain extent, because in China, they stream pay-per-views for free. They don't purchase pay-per-views, you know? So there's certain companies that you might have billions of people or whatever, but they're not necessarily going to be consumers and, and pro, you know, bring in revenue and purchase your products. You know, like the U S is always going to be the strongest for that. And then the UK uh, and Canada, like th- that's where you, you want to focus that energy towards. So, it would be interesting. Um, now he has some star power. He's not just coming over as a dude. He would now have star power. But then you have the Daisy Hit Squad already. Like they're not gonna add another person to that, you know. So, you know, is, is that someone that could be a possibility? Who really knows? But um, you know, I, I'd be okay. I'd be okay with it. You know, they obviously did well with his partner Galway years ago. So you know, maybe they would know what to do with him as well. So um, that's it for the, the opening, mo- opening monologue. Uh, I'm going to get into this past episode of Impact that happened last night. And uh, I'm going to do it in a very quick manner. I don't think this episode was good, like even a little bit. You know, the last week, the last couple of weeks were pretty good. And, you know, I tell you, my girlfriend is not a wrestling fan, but she does watch with me. And... I've kind of had her, I've been able to get her to sit down like three times in the last couple months to watch Impact. And I don't remember what the first episode was. It was in Windsor, but it wasn't good. And then the throwback throwdown, which a lot of you were entertained with that. I guess I was entertained in a way, but I also don't think it was good. I think Impact had more fun making it than most people did watching it, if that makes sense. And then they really beat it to death on social media to where now I just hate it. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it um you know most likely they had some social media numbers and some analytics that were in their favor you know information we're not privy to but then what they do is they you know they beat it to death and i've I've talked a lot about impact's inability to be organic the rich swan thing was organic you know he went through kind of went through that gauntlet and everyone everyone was talking so yeah you gotta you gotta capitalize but you have to be organic too. Like you have to let things, you have to put him in a position to succeed and then let him, let him get there. 
you know, so that's why I think the tag match was so unnecessary where he went against himself because that's that's pushing it. That's pushing things. And I used Jericho as an example when he did this little bit of the bubbly thing. Yeah, he played it up a little bit on social media after that, but it that happened organically. He didn't try to, you know, make something big with that. It was something that happened organically. He allowed it to build organically, and then he took advantage and said, hey, go to a little bit of the bubbly.com came out with his own product, sold 12,000 units in the first week. He's a genius. He's a marketing genius. If this were Impact, you know, they would have every day, hey, the bubbly, you know, every 10 minutes on Twitter, Facebook, oh, bubbly, bubbly, you know what I'm saying? They have to just find a way to be like, okay, we have to, we want to make stuff prevalent and we want to put it in front of people's faces, but we can't push it in their face. We can't shove it down their throat. Like they have to be better with that. You know, you let things happen or- organically and then you then you attack, you know. So that's why I think with, with Swan, with the tag team match, like they, I see what they try to do. I, I just think it was forced. You know, I thought I thought he was going on a good trajectory. But, um, you know, th- this this match here, and this was the third time that I got her to watch Impact with me. And she's noticeably bored, you know, in the shows I've watched with her. She watches AEW with me and she's, she's fine. And obviously... When you're not a wrestling fan, it's easier to watch a big arena show than something like this. But, you know, that's where I go back to the audio issues and the sound levels and shit like that. Because if you can't hear the crowd and you're someone who's sitting in as a casual or you're checking out Impact for the first time. Like, I had someone come to me and say, I want to I want to give Impact another shot. I was like, I will let you know when the episode is good. And then, then you go back and watch it. Because if he would have tuned in for this, if anyone would have tuned in for this, or, they, you know, they wouldn't be like, dude, Impact still sucks and I say still sucks because that's the opinion you know a lot of people have like this episode did nothing to with the aside from wrestlers court which was funny as fuck they didn't do anything to to grab anyone's attention with this episode where where last week we got the cage and Elgin and Eddie match which tore the house down you know that blew blew the roof off the place and you, you know these top five must see moments they've been doing like they're when you kick off number five with Johnny Swinger or Tommy Dreamer like nope you're not getting anyone's attention with this shit so that's all another rant for another day but this match here I mean this show here just it didn't even start off good that's that's the point I'm, I'm getting at and I have a lot of interest in heel RVD a lot of interest in him and Katie Forbes um, as a pairing. like, But he took that dry interview with Brian Cage and, and made it entertaining, him and Katie, you know? So, you know, it looks like they may be leading up to RVD and Brian Cage. I can get behind that. What I can't really get behind is Rhino versus RVD with Tommy Dreamer as a special guest referee. I mean, I would imagine some people like this stuff, but I would imagine the majority don't care for the rehash ECW shit. Now, I'm okay with it. This episode, RVD versus Rhino, the match was was real lethargic, real slow. Um, I was I was pretty bored with it, but once it was over, I was glad it was over. Um, everything was real. Uh, you know, what's the word? Uh, predictable. But when it was over, I was like, okay, cool. Let's move RVD into something good. And then they teased um, RVD versus Tommy Dreamer. So I mean, they're they're just gonna keep this going. Um, and I have no interest, no interest in that. I have no interest in anything, uh, Tommy Dreamer does at this point. Um, but Moose, Moose and AC Romero, that was something that I'm happy for AC Romero, talented guy. I was, I was excited to see what he could bring to the table. And, uh, you know, for that, the match was good, but you know, Moose is my favorite guy in the roster right now. And I just, this was another match. Uh, it had some nice spots. It had some nice moments. I was I was also kind of bored during it. I thought it went a little long. I thought Moose should have finished him with the go to hell. Uh, I I'm not a I'm a proponent of matches not requiring a roll up or a finisher to win sometimes. And the best story would have been told with Moose giving him the go to hell from the second rope with his so, with his size. You know what I mean? Like that's more likely to beat him than the no jackhammer needed. So when he kicked out of that, it took me out of the match. Because I knew he was just going to win with the spear and, you know, it's whatever. 
the the Susie stuff, you know, I mentioned my girlfriend watching earlier and being kind of bored. Like she's real into the Susie thing, and I am too. I I think this is not. I have no information on this or anything. I, I think yeah, they're they are kind of repackaging Sue here, but now that I'm watching these flashbacks, it makes me believe that they're going to bring her back to Sue Young more often than I mean, more you know sooner than later. It, you know, if she was like Susie and wrestling and, you know, a year from now they had the flashbacks, that would make more sense. But since they're doing it now, I don't ever think we'll see Susie in the ring. I I have this feeling that Sue is either injured or pregnant or something like that. And they're keeping her on, on, on television to pay her. Which, this is engaging. I like the story. But I feel like that's more likely what's going on rather than... I think I think that's more likely than us seeing Susie wrestle. I could be totally wrong. That it just it just my my gut. Um, again, I had no interest in the flashback. Uh, you're th- you know, it was the knockout, so that stuff's always pretty good. It was really random because ODB. I thought she was they were going to show a match. She was going to win. So ca- kind of random. They just have to do a better job with a call to action you know like they give us these flashbacks but they're not like you know you, you i mean for those of you who watch wwe and remember their campaign the 999 campaign and it was annoying and they beat it down our throat but at least we knew what to do like they're they're never like hey download the impact plus app the free version will give you um access to the weekly episode and and whatever else it is i pay for it so i don't, I don't even know the paid version at seven ninety nine, you'll get this and this, and and the same with the Impact Plus show. Like, hey, you know, this show is coming up this weekend. You know, I think they should have Gabby, Gabby Lorenz do like an old school little report instead of this flashback shit. You know, have her, you know, backstage somewhere. Maybe do a couple of interviews. Maybe there's a couple of video packages so like make us care, but be like, you know, hey, download Impact Plus for, you know. You're getting it free for the first 30 days, and you'll get this this show with it. And then after that, it's seven. Like you have to have some kind of call to action, you know, just like on YouTube, where I'm like, hey, subscribe to the channel, um, and this is what you're getting from the channel. Like you can't just be like, hey, this, you know, just show images of Impact Plus and flashbacks and think people are gonna subscribe. You have to give them a call to action, and they don't. So. I, I just, I mean, we've been asking for the flashbacks for years now to be done, and, and they continue. At least they're they're shorter, you know what I mean? Um, follow Bob versus Raj Singh. You know, follow was probably one of the best parts of the show. TJP coming in after was one of the best parts of the show. You know, he brought some life. But, uh, you know, they they haven't conditioned us to care about Raj Singh, and we've never seen him one-on-one before. So, um, you know, I think I think the match didn't didn't get over uh, really well, but but... No, Raj looked pretty good in it, but you know you have to condition us to care about him. You know, um, the the Joey Ryan stuff, as I said earlier, the wrestlers' court that was bad comedy, but it was good. Like it was funny, and it was really needed in the show. Played on, played into what was going on in real life with Joey Ryan. So they, I think they knocked that out of the park. I I found it pretty funny. I mean, uh, it was funny because I thought I saw KM, and then he got up. <laughs> So I guess he's he's made men's with with impact after a really bad fallout where he was calling out Scott Demore online for uh, low pay and things like that. So uh, that's good. I like KM. I, I would love to see him back. But um, even though I find him funny, I liked him when he was Sienna's cousin, like the big bruiser dude. Um, I liked that. A more serious guy. And then the, the tag team open. You know, I already kind of talked about that. Uh, I finally, you know, get to see Rascals. I'm assigned the Rascals, but Reno Scum versus OVE. I've been wanting to see that. So that was good for me as a fan. And the match overall was pretty entertaining. I just, um, you know, you know, I'm not a big fan of Dave Chris losing all the time. And I didn't think the Rich Swan stuff was necessary to get him over or to tell this story. The only the only way it makes sense is if, if uh, Willie Mack turns on him. That's that's the only reason this, this makes any sense. If it's just a you know make this match happen then uh, it's totally totally unnecessary and what else we get tessa versus fulton the rv the um i don't know why i said rvd the commentary this episode was a lot better than normal until we got to this and you know don Callis plays 
plays like this, uh, like Tessa's this, she's the number one contender. You're building the fucking show, the pay-per-view around her. You've been building the company around her and, and he still sells her as this, this victim. You know, he was yelling for the, the ref to stop the match 30 seconds into it. Come on. But you know, he was playing heel commentator, commentator up to this point. And, um, you know, to my point, when he's a heel commentator, when he chooses to be, he, he pulls for the heel knockouts spe- specifically, um, but then Tessa gets in a ring and he, you know, the fanboyism takes over and, um, just anything Tessa does, the, the, the commentary is always horrible for, and it, this match didn't need to end at three minutes, you know, like Fulton was whooping her ass. Yeah. She made a little comeback, but you didn't, LVE didn't have to come down. I remember looking at the time and like, whoa, there's 20 minutes left in the show and we still have two matches to go. So this was kind of a waste of time. They, Try to play it up that well. Tessa's not going to be one hundred percent for the pay per view. I, I can assure you, after that thirty second beat down, she's going to be okay by January twelfth. And then Sammy versus uh, Shamrock wasn't even a little bit good. Um, Shamrock, they obviously wrote him off TV with this, as far as him not coming back for the future shows, um, which is fine. And uh, Fulton looked good tonight. I was really worried worried Fulton was going to lose and and job and not job, but get pinned by Tessa, you know? So they, they protected him, which is good. Um, but Sammy, I mean, God forbid Sammy gets a clean win as the, as a world champion, you know, but, 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 but I did like the way they ended this with the ankle lock. And I mean, that was great. That was, I thought that was very creative. Just the match itself sucked. Um, okay, Shamrock, he's, he's just too old. I, I'm, I'm not in that kind of shape. Yeah. I do work out. I run, I'm not in that kind of shape. I'll never be in that kind of shape. So that's not what I'm getting at. But he, I, I think he's too old to be in there. Um, I appreciate everything he's done for TNA and for wrestling and for MMA, but I think he's too old to be in there. And, uh, you know, they made us, you know, Don Kyle said that Sammy Kellen had, had the more difficult opponent, opponent of the night. Like, I don't know about that. When you got monster madman Fulton, who's undefeated and Tessa's a girl, I, I don't see how Sammy's at more of a disadvantage. Um, so that match was no good, but the end, the ending was good. They obviously wrote Shamrock off TV, and I can I can deal with that. Um, I can I can live with it. So just overall, the the episode was not good, but next week's card looks excellent. It looks amazing. Next week really looks like they have a good show coming. So that I'm looking forward to quite a bit. Thanks for checking out the B-Side. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll talk.